French onion soup, also known as frenion soup, is a soup from France where the main delicious ingredient is cheese. We're gonna start by chopping up an off-putting amount of onions. You wanna cut them around a quarter of an inch thick. If you're in France using the metric system, you'd cut it at 0.00000635 kilometers thick. Keep your cell phone nearby so if one of your buddies walks into the kitchen and sees you crying, you can grab it and say, I'll do anything if you just take me back. That way they won't think the compounds in the onion are causing your lacrimal glands to become irritated like a weakling. You'll need around two pounds of onions, which is this much. Onion for scale. Now don't throw out that perfectly good onion paper. Instead, whip up a batch of paper mache paste and make a beautiful onion skin bowl. I also went back and made the cooked transparent version of the paste, and I have to say, this one's also going in the garbage. Now we're gonna caramelize the onions, which is a long, slow, painful, necessary process of turning the onions into worms. We'll start by adding butter to the pot. In France, you're legally obligated to use at least two tablespoons of butter anytime you turn on an appliance. We'll also add a tablespoon of olive oil for fat diversity. Our heat is on medium low, and we're gonna be careful not to crowd our pot with too many onions so they don't steam, which will cause it to take way longer to cook but this is the pot I have, so I'm gonna crowd the onions and we're just gonna see what happens. Pro tip, you can use two pots. We're gonna let these cook covered and wang jangle them every five or six minutes. This very slow process is how you draw out that delicious caramel flavor, along with this half teaspoon of sugar, which we'll wang jangle in. Time and patience is how you end up with one of the most iconic French foods. Et moi? Oh, you're iconic too, croissant. Et moi? Oh yeah, you're iconic too, baguette. Oh yeah, you're iconic too, croque monsieur. Now we're gonna separate a couple tablespoons of thyme leaves. One thing you can do is hold the top of the thyme branch and strip downward to get the leaves off. This doesn't work if you go in the other direction. If there's some flimsy bits in there, that's okay. Just keep your flimsy bits out of it for once. Another thing you can do is feed it through a small hole and then pull it through. But one thing you want to avoid is saying something like, wow, this soup sure does take a lot of time if you're not mentally and physically prepared to be a father. Meanwhile, things are just humming along at the old onion reduction facility here. Although that's a pretty vigorous bubbling, so I'm gonna turn that down even more, and that's a lot of liquid, so I'm leaving the top off a lot. We'll also get preparing the Gruyere in by dismantling it into shred shapes. And we're getting into some real onion color acceleration now. That's progress, people. Now we're gonna forage for some old crusty bread. The crustier, the better. This is perfect. Now we'll further crustify it by slicing it up and throwing it on a pan, then into the undo at Gundos on broil for a couple minutes, then a little flipsy doodle and back in, then our crust circles are complete. The onions are usually cooked until they're very dark, but some chefs say the deep flavors develop long before the darkness. I say I'm hungry and these are turning into mush, so here comes the vermouth. You can also use sherry or wine or even some kinds of vinegar. This helps deglaze but also saves time since you're eating soup while having a drink simultaneously. While the original recipe calls for your onion chopping tears as the broth, we're gonna go ahead and use beef broth for this one and just pour that in. And now we'll add in that thyme and salt and pepper, pepper, pepper to taste. And now you just cook it until it tastes amazing. Maybe 40 minutes, maybe just taste it. To trace the origin of French onion soup, we must first look back to the days of the French raw onion sandwich. During the bread shortage of 1726, water was added to make the sandwich taste more full. One night, Alexandre Toussaint left his watery onion sandwich on the radiator and fell asleep for the night. When he awoke, much to his astonishment, his wife let him know she was divorcing him for leaving his sandwiches all around the apartment. In that same century, French onion soup became popular in cafes around Paris. Now we'll spoon that soup into the special bowls with the built-in handle that are about to collect dust for years because you'll never make this again. Put in some floating crust discs, drown that with shredded gruyere, then back into broil for a couple minutes until that cheese is boiling. And there we have our delicious French onion soup. I crowded the pot, the onions fell apart, they didn't get dark enough, it still tastes incredible, for real. But I encourage any French chefs to let me know what I did wrong in the comments. And I equally encourage any non-chefs pretending to be chefs to also speak up so that it will dilute the blow and make it very hard to know what could have been done better, and then we'll all be able to live together in ignorance and harmony.